morning, Mum. Morning, dear. How are you feeling this morning, Craig? Oh, not great. A bit like an old minty with fur on it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got one, dear. Besides, you should start the day with a proper breakfast. Mm. Here you are. Chops, eggs, sausages and lots of bacon fat. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear, it's got a hair on it. Oh. <laughs> Excuse fingers. Oh, no, I couldn't handle it, Mum. Just a cup of coffee and a nice, comfortable grave. You were in late last night. I wish you wouldn't wait up for me, and I wasn't that late. I wasn't waiting up for you, and you were very late. So late that I had to go... I ran out of ironing and had to put it all through the washing machine again. <laughs> I got so desperate, I even watched Izzy die. Izzy die? No one gets that desperate. <laughs> Soap and water, Craig. Even Izzy die has a mother. You were very noisy last night. Your father almost stopped snoring. When? When you walked into the wardrobe and tried to clean your teeth with a coat hanger. Well, it was a mistake. I was just tired. Not too tired to sing Disco Duck. And kiss the doorknob. Good night. Well, it's a very pretty doorknob. Craig, I am worried about you. Why? Because I'm your mother. It's my job. And since you joined that uni drama group, you've changed. You're not the normal worry you used to be. You've turned into an anxiety. What are you talking about? Well, Craig, I want to know if... If... Well, if you... If you are smoking those university cigarettes up your veins... What? <laughs> you know what I am talking about, Craig. The drug gap, puberty addiction, <laughs> sniffing trips up your joint. <laughs> I watched all about it on the Mike Walsh show. What it? Marriage a heroine. <laughs> it turns you into a bank robber and you go to jail and eat cold turkey and make withdrawals all over the place. <laughs> on a derelict mattress. Mum, no, I'm not into drugs. I never will be. I'm a med student. I know about drugs. Last night, I just got good old plain healthy Australian drunk. What, like your father did at the Kingswood Owners Club Ball? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, well, that's all right then. Alcohol's not a drug, is it? Well, as a matter of... No, it's not. <laughs> oh, that's a relief off my mind. Oh, I'll get you coffee or you'll be late for uni. Yeah. Ted's going to be late if he doesn't hurry. Where is Dad? Outside, vacuuming the driveway. <laughs> He's vacuuming the driveway and you worry about me. He's that old willow tree in the vacant house next door. It keeps dropping used leaves and sparrow twos all over the driveway. <laughs> You'll never beat it. It's nature's way. Nature's way, Craig, is not your father's way. He says it's unnatural and wants the council to ban it. Oh, he's mad. <laughs> Look at last year, he tried to have daylight saving banned because the extra sunshine was making his bloody Kingswood fade. He <laughs> <laughs> did have a good point, Craig. Look how all that extra sunshine made the lawn go brown. Oh, whatever you say, Mum. Ted! Breakfast's ready and you're going to be late if you don't hurry up. Uh, oh, Mum, please don't shout. You're making my hair part from the inside. Oh, oh, how did the vacuuming go, dear? Someone should shoot that tree. <laughs> Bloody willow, willow tree should be banned from public. Roots are growing in under the fence and cracking the driveway. You mean the driveway's rooted? <laughs> in front of your mother, boy. Keep your grubby little tongue for that grubby little university where it belongs. You kids think you own the world. When I was a boy, we were too poor to swear. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. Why, me and my little brother had to sell newspapers for two years before we could afford to say bum. <laughs> but even then, it was only to the horse. And he was deaf. You had a deaf horse? Oh, come off it. No, it's true. We were too poor to afford a horse with hearing. Poor old, poor old far lap. <laughs> had to hang a sign in front of him saying, giddy up. <laughs> there you are. What's that? Becky. <laughs> Snags are a bit small, aren't they? Them vitamin pills. Look like bunny poop. Oh. <laughs> I'm not in. 
Why can't I have a proper breakfast like Craig doesn't want? Craig, Ted, is not in his heart-prone years. Now, you eat up your health breakfast and don't complain. After all, you're having a proper dangerous meal tonight. Hey? We're having a roast. Roast? It's only Tuesday. Legs of lamb don't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> this is a special dinner, Ted. Bob and Merle are coming over. Oh, why didn't you tell me Uncle Bob was coming over? The drama club's got a rehearsal tonight. Oh. Uncle Bob? Uncle Bob and Merle? You mean Bob Bullpit? Yes, Ted. <laughs> Your brother. He's no brother of mine. And as far as I'm concerned, he's persona quo vadis in this house. <laughs> Why? Because, Thelma, he has forfeited his birthright. He's a traitor to the Anzac religion. What'd he do, drink sake in an RSL club? <laughs> Worse, he became a Datsun dealer. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Ted, hurry up. You're going to be late. You haven't even warmed the car up yet. Thelma Bulpit, I've told you a thousand times, it's not a car. It's a Kingswood. <laughs> Hello, dear. How was your day? Terrible, of course. Bloody Pope ruined it again. What do you mean? <laughs> Had to park outside the Catholic school again. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody Mick kids breathing pollution all over the deer <laughs> I get off the train and find the Kingswood has been violated. Some junior Mick Mountaineer has climbed up the bonnet, lifted the windscreen wiper without my permission, and shoved a school fate leaflet under it. Oh, is that all? Is that all? I wasn't going to let it rest there. I dragged a nun over and showed it to her. <laughs> Listen, nun, I said, you're not getting any of my money at your school fate. How would you like it if I shoved a leaflet under your nun hat? Pip, you did it. Who right I did? You know what she said? Never mind, the Lord saves. And I said, if the Lord had saved in the first place, you wouldn't need to run a school fight. <laughs> well, you own, you've only got yourself to blame, you know. If you hadn't wasted so much time this morning vacuuming those leaves, you could have parked on your normal posse. Mm, bloody leaves. Drive in tonight and they're all over the place again. Millions of them. Throwing around as if they grow on trees. <laughs> Where's my paper? It's in the lounge room, of course. Oh. <coughs> Ted, I mean to tell you, Rita and Bruno are going to be here too for dinner tonight. said good day. Good day? Good day? Is that all you're going to say? Well, what do you want me to say? Hello, father-in-law, darling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, father-in-law, darling. You happy now? <coughs> <laughs> What's the matter with you? You're reading the paper. That's right. What do you want me to do? Smoke it? <laughs> it's my paper. It's not. It's mine. Listen, you perverted little valiant owner. You're, in this house. you're on my couch and you may have been able to race off my daughter, but you're not stealing my paper. Now, give us it. It's my paper and I'm reading it. Give us it? No. Listen, Wog, it's my <laughs> paper. Give us it. There's something wrong with you, Mr. Bullpit. There's nothing wrong with me, mate. I just happen to like reading my paper. Oh, hello, Dad. <clears throat> Here's your paper. Like who? Well, Ted's old army mates. 
They popped in once. That was in 1947 when they were <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it was too. Doesn't time fly when you're married to Ted? <laughs> 1947. Oh, that was the year I went out with Bob Bullpit. You mean Ted Bullpit, Dad? No, Bob. You went out with Uncle Bob? Shh, your father doesn't know. It was before we met. What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened, Greta. Well, not much. We did have some torrid times in his sports car, though. <laughs> Of course, Bob was a bit younger than me, but didn't seem to worry him. Didn't worry me, either. Mum, <laughs> you're an old raver. Oh, Greta. Because we decided to break it off when Bob disappeared with a nurse. Met your father a few months later. Came as quite a surprise when I got to the church and found that Bob was our best man. <laughs> oh, he kept winking at me. That sounds like Uncle Bob. He's an old poo. Greta. <laughs> well, he is. He's all over you like a rash. Oh. And that infuriating, hey, 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 how's my little kitty today? Remember, another couple of years and I'll be ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's just trying to be friendly. Any more friendly and he'd be on a charge. Great. <laughs> I don't know why Auntie Merle doesn't punch him. She does. <laughs> that, that, that's our secret greeter, not a word. Hi, howdy, everybody. Here comes the party. Oh. oh. <laughs> Hello, world. Yes, it's me, Bob Bulpit. Don't swoon. I'm human. Shut up, Bob. <laughs> I'm also henpecked. Shut up, Bob. Hello, Greece. Hello, Annie Mel. Tell me you're looking wonderful. Oh, thank you, Bob. Hey, hey, hey. How's my little cutie today? Remember a couple more years and I'll be ready for you. A couple more years and you'll be ready for the pension. <laughs> if it's going to be one of those nights, Mel. Shut up, Bob. We bought some champagne. Champagne? Oh, you shouldn't have. That's what I said. <laughs> it's French. French champagne? Ooh la la, gay Paris, wee oui, wee. Oui. Most probably will if we drink all of it. <laughs> oh, Mel, you are a card. Thelma, my sizzling little Thelma. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ah, those gypsy eyes. They bring out the animal in me. A water buffalo. <laughs> Why can't we settle all this in the car? Shut up, Bob. Why don't you go and talk at Ted? Where is old Grumblebum? He's in the lounge room having a nice long silence with Bruno. Right, I think I'll go and surprise him. Open the champagne first, Bob. Oh, I don't think we have a champagne opener. I'll open it, Bum. Oh, no, don't worry. Here, Mill, make yourself useful. Bite the top off that. Teddy boy. I do. But I'm your brother. You're not my brother, you're a Datsun dealer. <laughs> G'day. Bob Bullpit, Bobby Bullpit's Datsun Land, where you get a deal as genuine as my smile. <laughs> G'day. Bruno Bertolucci. Ah, you're the Bruno that Ted tries to keep a secret. Yeah. Don't know why. You're an intelligent man, Bruno. How are you set for wheels? Fine, I've got a car. It's not a car, it's a purple Valiant. <laughs> Good colour. I've got a purple house. <laughs> Painted it to match the swimming pool. <laughs> How about a beer, Ted? We just ran out. Didn't you bring any? No. That'd be right. I uh, brought some French champagne. 
That'd be right. Bog corks popping and making holes in the ceiling. <laughs> I'll get you a beer, Bob. We got plenty in the fridge. We? We? What's this we? I have plenty in the fridge. Good, I'll have one in. <laughs> right, beer's coming up. Leave the money on the fridge. <laughs> oh, Bruno, you used to be an Italian. You'd know about ice cream. Yeah. But you know how ice cream tends to melt a bit when you put it into a moderate oven? Yeah. <laughs> I just did. So would you drive up to the shop and get me some more? Sure. Oh, I can't. The car's being in service. Sorry. Oh, oh take tins. OK, then. Oh, oh. Uh, Mr. Baldwin, oh. can I borrow the car? <laughs> the Kingswood? You're not taking the Kingswood. I just polished the dipstick. <laughs> Bloody thing, every time I pull it out, it's got oil on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mentioned it. No, you're not taking the Kingswood anywhere. Take a bus. Take a train. You're probably the only one who could understand the announcements. <laughs> Bloody jabbering wogs, for all I know, they could be telling me to do something obscene. They probably are, with the train. Bruno, <laughs> I've got a great little Datsun demo unit outside, why don't you take it for a spin? Who knows, we might be able to do a deal as genuine as my smile. <laughs> Fine, can I have the keys? Get them from Merle, she won't let me drive. <laughs> Everyone having port? Oh, mm. yes, yes. Yeah, that'll be right. Chugging around my port like it's going out of style. <laughs> it's not your port, it's mine. I bought it. I'll have a pint. <laughs> it was a lovely dinner, Phil. Oh, thank you. It was cooked so adequately. <laughs> yes, sir, Phil, you've done it again. My favourite meal. Oh. You cannot beat a great roast chicken. <laughs> It was lamb. <laughs> but very chickeny. <laughs> you swear that lamb had feathers, uh, had wool. Shut up, Bob. Just one more meal on that. Have a dear, dear. Let's all sit down and have fun. We are sitting down having fun. <laughs> In the comfy chairs. Go on, everyone over there, and I'll clear up. No, 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 Thel. We insist. You cooked it. We'll clear up. Off you go, Mel. <laughs> Don't try it, Merle. <laughs> oh, yes. It's a nice place you got here, Ted. The couch. Yeah, a nice couch, too. <laughs> Sit on it. What for? What's wrong with the chair? Nothing. It's my bloody chair. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Same old grumble bum. You never change, do you? Even when you were a kid. The Mulvan Star! You're not taking the Mulvan Star! <laughs> I just shampooed the pedals! <laughs> ah, Greta, my little kitty. Why don't you come over and sit on your old uncle's lap? Like you used to. Uh, I think I'll just go and help Mum in the kitchen. <laughs> That's a wonderful little girl you got there, Bruno. You're a lucky man. That'll be right. She's too good for him. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I'm pretty lucky. Not lucky, just quick. <laughs> yeah, lucky, all right. Suppose one day I'll inherit all this. Over my dead body. <laughs> the only thing you'll inherit, mate, is all those bloody leaves out in the driveway. <laughs> bloody willow tree next door. Someone should shoot it. Why don't you cut it down? There's no one living next door. Why don't you sneak in one night and cut it down? Great! Good idea! Let's do it now! Love cutting down trees. <laughs> Haven't got a saw. I have. Brand new chainsaw in the boot of the car. Fell off the back of a truck, right on schedule. <laughs> well, I use it. Come on! No, no, I'm having no part of it. Oh, chicken. Are you in it, Bruno? Why not? They're gonna be my leaves. Bloody yahoos. Carry hooting around out there with a deadly chainsaw. <laughs> Any sort of luck and it'll get stuck in his pocket. <laughs> Ted, what's happening? What's all that noise? Where are Bob and Bruno? They're next door cutting down that bloody willow tree. 
It's eleven o'clock at night. They'll wake up all the sparrows. Don't be <laughs> silly, woman. Quite a lot to fix it, isn't it, Ted? <laughs> Ted? You shouldn't cry about it. Oh, oh, I'm not crying, Thelma, I'm giggling. I'm just thinking about the look on Bob's face when he saw his pissy little dats and crashed under that rope. <laughs> That'll teach him to drive nip cars. <laughs> what about poor Merle, though? It was terrible when she chased him with that chainsaw. <laughs> Thank God it ran out of petrol before all those police arrived. <laughs> well, Thelma, I got rid of that tree, rubbed out a Datsun, and watched Bob get arrested. <laughs> That's what I call a very nice night's entertainment. <laughs> Good night, Thelma. See you tomorrow. Oh, no, dear. Oh. Is that you, Craig? No, Mum, it's a drug-crazed rapist. <laughs> Good boy. 